This is a video to try to demystify how to sew the paw pads that are applique on with a sewing machine. These are also applique paw pads. And here is some supplies that you'll need. Of course, your fabric that you want to use, some pins, stuffing, a couple of implements for picking the fur out of the seams, a uh, charcoal pencil, um, a tool to, to add the stuffing, tiny pair of scissors, and a little bit bigger pair of scissors. The tiny pair of scissors are very important and they should be very, very sharp. Let's get started. So to start, you want all your patterns cut out and you want to be ready to applique your paw pads and I will show you how to do that. So these are the palm patterns for my um, hand paws that I'm going to be making and I'll take my charcoal pencil. Sometimes it helps to have a template if you aren't very good at drawing. Uh, you can cut out a template. I've got a paw pattern on my website matrices.net that you can download and then this uh, paw template is uh, just draw around it. And then draw your finger pads. You want to have a slight margin because you'll need a seam allowance when you draw around. Your pads, there's going to need to be where you sew your, your front and back paws together. Also, in between your fingers you'll need space as well. Now I think that looks great and uh, this will be your guidelines for where you will sew with your sewing machine when you add your paw pad material. So the way that we're going to do this is we've got our paw pad material and uh, this is uh, like a fabric backed vinyl and it's a little bit stretchy. You kind of want something a little stretchy when you do this um, if you want to be able to stuff your paw pads. You want to find the side of the fabric that you like the best and you want to cut out just a small square. I've got one that'll cover each. On the front, you'll arrange this in about the spot where you've put your drawing for your palm, and you'll pin it into place. Pinning at this stage helps keep the two pieces of fabric together so they don't slide around. So there is my pattern piece and my guidelines on where to sew. I'm going to start sewing on my machine, making sure that the piece on, underneath is not going to roll up. And I'm going to start sewing on the line, doing a small back stitch when I start. Now I'm going to stuff the palms on this particular set of paw pads, so I'm going to leave an opening so I can stuff. So this is what I have so far. This is what I've sewn around these edges, and then I've left an opening between my stitches here. Now I'm going to take my tiny scissors, these are the very sharp ones, and I'm going to fold this up and keep the pile of the fur out of the way as I trim away this segment. Try to cut as close to your stitches as possible in this case because that way you'll have less to have to cover up with your satin stitch or your zigzag, whatever you prefer to call it. So I'm just taking my finger and spreading that fur away from the seam and giving it a trim. You 
You always want to be extra careful not to cut any of the pile of the fur as you're doing this. And then you'll also want to trim and just shape the bottom of your pad as well. Still being mindful of the pile, of course. So here's my initial paw pad. If you wanted to, you can close this up with your first sewing if you don't plan on stuffing your paw pad, but I like to make my paw pads more dimensional. And I use a little bit of stuffing and I'll stuff them. It helps to have a tool to stuff them with because it's not sometimes not a very big space. Sometimes you can't quite get your finger in there, so it helps to get a tool to be able to stuff that. And even if your finger does fit, it still helps to have that tool to spread this stuff around. And I'm spreading it around up in the upper edges here. Now that those pads are nice and plump, I'm going to take a comb and I comb a little bit of the fur out of the seams while it's going to be easier to brush out of the seams. So, got it all brushed out and I'm going to sew it a second time. In this case, I'm going to sew it with a tight zigzag stitch, which is also known as a satin stitch. And I'm going to take it uh, to a pretty narrow stitch, something that I'm comfortable with. You'll want to test yours on a separate piece of uh, fabric to make sure that it's a width and tightness that you desire. And then as you sew it, you're going to sew right on that edge and cover up that raw edge. And you don't want to rush it through, you just want to let the machine pull the fabric for you so the stitches stay even. And you just want to make sure that the pile of the fur is out of the way as you sew. As you come to your opening where you stuffed it, be sure that you have very good coverage since you don't want that edge to pull up. Sometimes it helps to sew that particular segment a second time. Okay, I'm going to take a look at this and see if I need to do that. So here it is. Snip away my and here we have the applique paw pad and the edges looking good Here's what it looks like on the back side, and you can see that I zigzagged basically directly over where I straight stitched it. I think I am going to go over that bottom edge one more time, just to reinforce it. So for the finger pads, I typically don't stuff the finger pads. 
That way I have more dexterity. I'm going to cut a small piece for the thumb. That looks about right. You just want to make sure it covers the end of the finger. Pin that in place. I'm going to snip any of these extra threads first. Go back to the straight stitch. So directly around my tracing, where I drew where I wanted my pop pad. I'm not going to stuff this one, I'm just going to go all the way around it. And I'm done. If you notice there's any spots where you overran it, like see there's a small area right here, you can just pick that seam because you want it to be totally round. You don't want it to be There we go, that should match up. Here's what I've got on the other side. Get my threads. Take those tiny scissors again and very carefully cut away that excess. And I've used this applique technique for all sorts of fabrics. Uh, works for this uh, stretchy vinyl, um, minky, and cotton fabrics, as well as uh, pieces of fleece and things like that. So you can use your favorite material and not have to worry about cutting out a bunch of tiny little circles and lining everything up. You just know you'll line it up excellent because you're going right along your lines. Take my comb, comb out those seams very well. Sometimes it helps to have a wire brush also. This is a small wire brush. Just make sure your wire brush isn't going to scratch the material that you're going to use for your pop pads. machine sitting back to a zigzag. And 
sew around those edges to cover up those raw edges. Is my thumb pad or my pair of hand paws. It's very cute. And here is the other side of it. Sufficient allowance to sew the top part and I've completely sewn over my straight stitch. Looks great. Continue this process with the rest of your fingers and you'll have a full set of uh, finger pads and a nice squishy palm. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope this has been informative.